Let's go back. Okay. So you finished high school. Well, this brings up the Rosenstrasse because mm -hmm. I happened to be home to study for the, the uh, final exam. I mean, the Abitur, so-called. Our project is on the women of Rosenstrasse. In early 1943, Nazis began to take Jewish children and husbands, who were previously protected by their Aryan wives, and naturally, people didn't like it. The Women of Rosenstrasse was a group of women that protested against the Nazis and SS soldiers that was the most successful protest in the history of the Holocaust. After the release of their husbands and children, and it lasted from February 27th, 1943 to March 1944. The women found out about their kidnapped husbands and children and where they were being held from rumors. At first, it was a small group of women that was protesting. Then the crowds got larger and more found out about their husbands and children were taken from them. After several weeks of protesting, the Nazi and SS soldiers loaded machine guns and pointed it at the crowd, threatening to shoot them all if they did not move. At first, the women moved back a few steps. Then they, started, then they all started chanting, murder, 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 over and over again. The reason it was the most successful protest was because it would look wrong if they shot a bunch of German women. Out of the 2,000 men, only 25 were sent back to the death camps in Auschwitz. The phrase we want associated with the protest, though it's unknown whether the chant was said. And uh, without warning, I mean, the bell, you know, I, I finally wrote about it in 88, 45 years after it happened. The bell rang like aggressively, bing, bing, like that. And in came two Nazis, and they set my mother down, and they talked to her, maybe not realizing she was a Jewish part. I don't know. I mean, she was very attractive and nice and all that. And finally they said, they realized it. Maybe they knew all along, uh, you have to come with us. No warning, none. And if any of your children are home, they can come with us too. In 1943, the men and children were set free from their prison. And I was home and I heard it. I was sort of behind. We had a, a, a well, the door was open. She was in a little in-between room, you know, that uh, there was a hall leading from there. And I heard it and I thought, out the side door and flee, you know. <laughs> then I said, I can't leave her. And besides, I couldn't have gotten away anyway. There was a truck out there, which I didn't know, with somebody with a rifle. He they was fortunate. Now, when you arrived home, did your father know that you were coming home? I don't think so. I, uh, I just know that we came home, and he was at home, and my mother saying something like, we are home again now. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, I wrote that in the story too. He came and kissed me goodnight and said, forget if you can, forget if you can. Mm -hmm. But uh, how can you? The thing is, you know, as we rode through the streets, I kept thinking, are they going to ask me to choose my mother? Or are they going to ask me to choose my father? Now, if I choose my mother to stay with her, what guarantee do I have that I will stay with her? If I choose my father, he may be left completely alone. I mean, it was a crazy idea 